Hey guys, in this video I will show you how to create this kind of inflation with Vellum in Houdini and we will use a noise to control the inflation. So let's dive in. So I've created a new blank scene in Houdini and the first step is to add a new geometry node. So let's type geometry and here can we name it something like inflation shape. You can dive inside and here the first step is to create some geometry. So in my case, I will add the file node to import my external geometry. So if you want, you can create your own shapes in Houdini or if you want, you can use the same shape as mine. So you can go into the website project 3D model abstract and you can get 50% free with the code YouTube inflates on every model here. Also, if you want, you can download the project files and of course the 3D model will be included. If you want, you can check the link in the descriptions. So here I have imported my three geometry. I have the first one, the second one and the third one. And the first step is to add a match size node. And here with the match size node, you can click on scale to fit and you can put the justify Y into minimum. In that case, the object will go into the floor of the scenes. So here you can duplicate the match size node for the different files. So you can click on alt and left click to duplicate the node for the file number two and also for the file number three. So now I have my three geometry and the first step is to create an attribute variance for each individual geometry here. And we will use this attribute variance to copy the geometry into different points randomly. So to do that, let's add an attribute create. And here for the attribute create, we can change the name of the attribute to variant. So the value for the variant attribute for the first geometry will be at zero. The value for the second one will be at one. So I can change the value here to one. And the value for the third one will be at two. So I can change the value one more time and I will put two for the third geometry. So now I can select all the attribute create and I can plug that into merge. And now I have my three geometry at the same positions on the scenes. And now we can create a grid to create some points on the grid and we can copy the geometry into these different points. So for the settings of the grid, I will just change the size to five and five. And here I will add a scatter node. So here for the scatter node, I will put 100 points in my case, but of course this is up to you. You can change the value if you want. So now I will add the copy two points and I will plug the geometry into the first input of the copy two points and I will plug the point into the second input of the copy two points. And now we can check the results of our copy two points. And now you can see that we have all the geometry copies into each different points. So we want to avoid that. So we want to copy the three geometry randomly into our 100 points. So to do that, you can use the attribute from pieces. And here you can plug the geometry into the second input of the attribute from pieces and you can plug the point into the first input. And here you can change the name of the piece attribute, which is not name in our case, but variance. This is the attribute we have created into the ge geometry here with the attribute create node. And now we can plug that into the second input of the copy two points. And here on the copy two point, you can include a piece attribute. In our case, it's variant attribute. So now you can check the result and you can see that we have all the geometry copies randomly on the different points. So now if you want, you can add an attribute randomize and you can add a first one to add a color attribute. In that case, you can get a better visualization of the different objects. And now you can add another attribute randomize and this one will be for the orient. In that case, we can change the orientation randomly for each individual geometry. So here you can replace the attribute name and you can put orient and you can change the dimension to four. And now you can see that we have a random rotation for every model. So now let's add a transform node. So the first step of the simulation is to create a rigid body simulation to place the geometry correctly into the scene and then we can dive into the vellum simulations. So here with the transform node we can move the geometry a bit up on the y axis so we can change the value of the translation on the y axis to something like 5. And now we can add an assemble node and we can click on create pack primitive. In that case we have one pack primitive per geometry. And now we can add an attribute angle. And with these attribute angles, we can create an attribute called found overlap. In that case, we can remove the overlap between the different pieces in the rigid body simulation. So let's type E at found overlap is equal to one. So now let's add the rigid body solver. So let's type RBD bullet solver. And you can plug the geometry into the first input. And maybe you can put something like here because we will add a collision geometry for the different pieces. So let's add a box. And here you can make the box visible and you can make the, the geometry as a preview by clicking on this and you can go into the top view by pressing space two. and here you can change the size of the box. So you can select the box, select this little icon and here you can change the size of the box to maybe something like this, like this and like this and like this. So you have to fit the geometry with your box. So now you can go back into the 3D view by pressing space one. Now you can move the top part of the box to something like this. 
And now we can change the size of the bottom faces. So to do that, you can select this, you can select your box and you can select this as a primitive and you can press E to change the scale of these faces. So now you can make something like this and also something like this on the X axis. So now you can move the face up on the Y axis by pressing T and you can move it something like here. Also, you can remove the top and the bottom faces. So to do that, you can select them. So you can select the top faces and the bottom faces by clicking on shift and left click. And you can press delete on the keyboard. In that case, it will remove the top and the bottom faces. So now you can see that we have some intersection between the geometry and the collider geometry. So it can be a good idea to tweak it a bit more. So maybe you can go into the box and you can increase the size to something like this. And also something like this into the z-axis and maybe a bit more into the x-axis too. So you can press left click and shift to move it symmetrical on the x-axis. And I think we are good with that. So now we can add a poly extrude node and we can make a little extrusion for our collision geometry. So you can change the distance to maybe something like 0.2, something like this. And you can click on output back. So in that case, it will create this kind of geometry. So now you can add a merge node. In that case, we can create another collider geometry and we will add another box. So here you can visualize the box, you can go into top view and here you can make this one visible with a pink flag and here you can change the size of this box so you can make it a bit larger than the small part of the first collider geometry to something like this, something like this and click on shift and left click to make it symmetrical like this and you can move this one a bit on the left. So now you can click on space one to go back into the 3D view and here you can add the match size node. And here with a match size node, you can put the justify Y on minimum. In that case, it will put the bottom of this box to the floor on the scenes. And here I think we are good for this box. So now you can select this little icon into primitive mode. You can remove the top faces so you can select it and you can press delete on the keyboard. So now you can add the poly extrude node. And you can create a little extrusion for this box to maybe like before something like 0.1 or 0.2. So don't forget to click on output box and now we are good to go for the collider geometry. So you can select the two poly extrude, you can plug that into the merge and you can plug the merge into this input, which is the collision geometry input for the rigid body solver. So now you can select the rigid body solver, you can go into collisions and here you can change the collision sh shape to concave and here you can put that to zero and you can also go into the advanced tab and you can select the bullet solver tab and you can put the sleeping time to zero. So now we can see the results of our rigid body simulations. So we can click on play. And now we have these kind of things. So now you can see the results of our rigid body simulation. Now we have all the geometry into this little box here. Of course, it's up to you. You can change the size and the position of the collider if you want. Maybe it can be a good idea to move this first one a bit up on the y-axis. So let's add a transform node and plug the transform node just after the poly extrude node. And here you can change the, the position on the y-axis to, let's say, something like 0.5, something like this. And we can change this one to uh, maybe 6. So now let's see the results of the rigid body simulation. Click on play. And I think it's a bit better. So now you can put that in cache. So let's add a file cache node. And here you can rename it something like RBD simulations. So you can put that into explicit. You can put that into a cache folder and into $OS folder. And here you can put the simulation in cache for let's say 120 frames. So you can right click on the last frame here, delete channels, and you can replace it with the value at 120. So now you can click on save to disk for the file cache. It will be very fast. So now you can use a time shift node to freeze the simulation, let's say at the last frame, which is 120 in my case. So let's add a time shift node. And here is the time shift. By default, the value is at $F, which is the current frame of the timeline. So you can right click, delete channels, and here you can replace it with the last frame you have in cache. So 120 in my case. So now the simulation is freeze over time. And this is perfect for the start of our volume simulations. Of course, you can check we have some little pieces uh, into the bottom of the box, so it can be a good idea to remove them. So to do that, you can select the time shift node, you can select this icon, and here you can select this one, this one, and also let's check if it can be a good idea to remove some pieces here. So maybe this one and also this one, and click on delete on the keyboard. So now we have this result, but I have also a little parts into the bottom here, so I will remove it also. So I will select this, select these pieces and press delete on the keyboard. 
So now I have this as an input geometry for the VLAM simulation. So now before diving into the VLAM simulation, you can unpack the geometry because for the rigid body solver, we have to, to pack the geo and for the VLAM, we have to unpack them. So you can add the unpack node and now everything is ready for the VLAM simulation. So let's add a null and let's specify this is the base for our VLAM sim. So you can type VLAM geo, for example. So the first step is to add the connectivity node. And you can see that the connectivity node will create a class attribute on the points. And if you go into the geometry spreadsheet, you can see that we have the class from 0 to 94 because this is the number of pieces I have. I have 95 pieces in my case. So now we can dive into the VLAM simulation. First, we need to create an attribute moving from 0 to 1 over time. So let's add an attribute delete after the connectivity node. And here with the attribute delete, we can remove the color attribute we have created at the beginning of the tutorial. So here on the point attribute, we can select our color attribute to remove it. Now let's add a point VOP. You can also do that in VEX if you want. So here you can dive into the point VOP and the first step is to add a bind. In that case, we can import our class attribute. So you can type class and this is an integer value. So you can change it to integer. So now you can use the integer to float. Let's add a turbulent noise. And here you can plug this one into the positions and you can animate the value of the noise with the time. So you can plug the time into the offset of the noise. You can add a multiply constant value between the time and the offset. In that case, you can control the speed of the animations. And here you can use a fit range after the noise. In that case, we can remap the value. So here you have the fit range and later we can tweak the value if needed. So you can plug that into color attribute to get a preview of the noise. And you can also add a bind export. In that case, we can export a custom attribute. So in my case, I will name the attribute something like inflation and this is a float attribute from zero to one. So here maybe we can tweak the value for source min and source max to get a bit more contrast on our noise here. So maybe we can increase it to something like this and decrease this one to something like this. I think we are good. And here for the multiply constants, I will put the value at 0.4 to reduce the speed of the animations. Otherwise it will be a bit too fast, I think. So we are good for the attribute. We can copy the inflation attribute here and we can use that later in the VLAM simulations. So now let's add a null to specify this is the end of our attribute. You can rename it something like out attributes. Now let's configure the VLAM simulation. First, let's add a remesh node. And here with a remesh node, by default, the value is at 0.2. I think it's a bit too high. We don't get enough resolution on our object. You can see we are very, very low resolution object. So now we can change the target size to something like 0.05. Of course, this value depends on your own geometry. So now let's add an attribute transfer to get the class attributes on the remesh object. Later, we can use that for the points deform node. So here we can plug that into the first input and you can plug the original geometry into the second input of the attribute transfer. So here you can select the point and you can select the class attribute because this is the attribute we want to transfer from the original geometry to the remesh geometry. So now let's create the VLOM simulation. So let's import the VLOM configure balloons. In that case, we will get the VLOM close constraints and the VLOM pressure constraints. Let's add the VLOM solver. So here for the VLOM solver, I will go into forces. I will disable the gravity, but this is up to you. You can keep the gravity if you want. And I will just increase the simulation cache a bit here. So now I can dive into the VLOM solver. So here for the VLOM pressure, I will create a group to target the group into the VLOM solver. So I can select my constraints and here you can see we can create a group so you can enable the group. But we already have a group called stretch here for the VLAM close. So we can rename the name of the group. In that case, we can get a different group for the VLAM pressure constraints. And here we can name it something like P stretch. And now we can go back into the VLAM solver and we can type VLAM constraint properties. And here you can plug that into the source node. So here we can target a group so we can enable this option. And in my case, a group is called P stretch because this is a pressure constraint node I want to target. So now we can import the attribute we have created in SOP with the point VOP here. So we need to import this null into the VLAM solver. So to do that, you can select the VLAM constraint properties. You can go into input and here into the input tree, you can select your SOPs. And here you can select the null object. So in my case, the null is called out attribute. So you can click on accept. Now I can go into properties and I can enable the rest length scale and I can click on use vex expressions. So here for the expression, the first step is to read the attribute we have imported into the input. So in my case, it's into input three. So let's create a new float variables and we can rename it something like inflations. So here to read the attribute, you can use the point functions. And as we have the input three, we have to type two and here the name of the attribute is called inflations. And here you can type add pt num. 
So for now, this value is moving from zero to one and I think it can be a good idea to keep a bit of pressure on our object. Otherwise you can get some strange result at the end. So we can fit this value between another value to keep a bit of pressure into it. So let's type inflations. And here you can remap the value with the fit functions. So let's type fit and here we can use our inflation value. And you can remap it from zero to one to something like one and 10. So this value, basically, you can change it if you want to get more or less inflation on your objects. And now you can tweak the rest length scale value based on this inflation value. So let's use the rest scale times equal our inflations. So you can copy that and paste it here. And now let's see the results of our vellum simulation. So now you can go back into the sub level and maybe we can create a collider for our geometry. So let's add a box. And here you can make that visible with a pink flag and you can make the box visible. So you can go back into the top view by pressing space two. And now you can change the size of the box by clicking on this and you can change the size with shift and left click. And you can adjust it like this and also on the other side. So now you can go back in the 3D view by pressing space one. So now you can use a match size node to put the box at the floor of the simulations. So here with a match size node, you can change the justify Y to minimum and you can plug that into the third input of the vellum constraint, which is a collision geometry input. And now you can go back into the front view by pressing space three. And here you can just increase the size of the container by changing the Y value into the size. So you can put it something like this. And here you can add a bit of negative offset into the Y. So you can put the value at something like minus 0.05. So now let's see the result of the vellum simulation. So you can click on the vellum solver and now we can click on play to see the result of the inflations. So this is the result I have for the inflations and I have my vellum object moving with the noise created into the point vop. Of course, you can always tweak the settings if you want into the point vop and also into the vellum solver. If you want to get more or less inflation, if you want to get more or less, less speed into the noise. So yeah, it's basically up to you. So now if you want, you can use the Vellum IO to put the simulation in cache and here you can rename it something like Vellum Inflation. So here you can put that into explicit and you can put that in cache and you can put that into dollar $OS folder. So here basically you can put the simulation in cache for the frame 1 to 120, but this is up to you. So you can click on that and you can, you can click on save to disk. So now let's use a point deform node. In that case, we can use our original geometry as a moving object. So with a point deform, we can do that. So let's take the original geo, which is this one. Let's take the remesh geo, which is here. And let's take the animated geo, which is here. And now with a point deform, you can see we have the original geometry as a moving object. Also, if you have some issue with a point deform like this, you can use a class attribute into the piece attribute. And in that case, it will solve the, solve the issue. You can see we have some slight issue here. You can increase the radius to something like 0.5, maybe 0.5 here, and it will solve all the problem. So now we have the original geometry as a moving vellum object. So if you want, you can use a subdivide node to add one level of subdivisions and you can put that in cache if you want. So now let's add a null to specify this is the end of our geometry and you can rename it something like render. So now for the material, if you want, you can add some material into the input geometry here. So in that case, you can get three different material or if you want, you can use a class attribute to create random material distributions. And if you want to know how to do that, I've already made a video into the channel. So you can check the previous video I have made and you can follow this video to assign the material to your, your different object. If you want to assign material randomly. That's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and check artivoxar.com to get premium 3D resources. You can access to this project file with our Artifiles membership. See you in the next one. Bye.